Good day. So, in the comments of my other videos, a lot of people have been asking questions like, how do we plan the factories we build? And why are we doing some of the things that we're doing? So, with that in mind, I've decided to make a bit of a different video. But before we get into it, I just want to mention that everything I say in this video is all just my personal opinion, which is a result of my own personal experience. So, with that out of the way, here are my 5 tips for massive factories. Tip number 1. Write things down. When planning massive factories and massive production lines, you'll be dealing with a lot of large numbers and a lot of maths. Working out how many machines you need, how many resources you need, load balancing, etc, etc. So, it's incredibly important to keep track of all the numbers. That's why writing things down is so vital. Me personally, I like to have a notepad and a calculator sitting on my desk. You can obviously achieve the same thing using a spreadsheet on the computer, but I guess I'm a little old school in that regard. Now. Writing things down doesn't just come in handy for planning a project, it's also super handy for keeping track of things once you start utilising those projects. For example, in the main base of my current Duo playthrough, we're using a method which I've decided to call stockpiling, where instead of just taking belts from one place to another, we're pulling all our resource in one giant merged storage area where we can tap into it for future projects. Then, whenever we take an amount per minute out of the stockpile, we can just subtract that from the total per minute that we're getting in. So the plan is to keep track of all of that. Which leads nicely into tip number two. Have a plan. Now, in my opinion, there are three main ways to plan a massive project. Those being bottom-up planning, top-down planning, and lastly, designing the building you want and then making everything else work with it. Now, when I say bottom-up and top-down, I'm not talking about the structure of the factory. I'm talking about the production line itself. So, Here's a couple different examples of what I mean. For our iron ingot project in the grasslands, our plan was to collect all the iron nodes in the grasslands and then make as many iron ingots as possible using the pure recipe. This is an example of what I would call from the bottom up planning. For an example of what I would call top down planning, in my original unmodded playthrough, I needed to make 130 heat sinks per minute. So I built everything in this factory with that target goal in mind. For an example of building the structure first and then making everything work within it, in my original playthrough, I designed this massive structure with no idea what was going to happen inside it. But I knew that as it grew, I could keep adding floors to it if I ran out of space. Which leads into tip number three. Go big. When I say go big, I like to use the philosophy of better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Now, obviously, the first thing that comes to mind when I say this is floor space, which is 100% true. You can always deal with a bit of unused space, but it's much harder to deal with the problem of not having enough space. But I'm not just talking about floor space when I say go big. I'm also talking about power capacity and production. It's always terrible planning your next massive project and then realizing you don't have nearly enough power to support it. Which is why when you build a power plant, I would advise going as big as possible. 
Likewise, with production, especially with the new crushing machine and smart splitter overflow option, any excess production you don't need can simply be sent to the crushing machine to generate your tickets, which is always a good thing. Tip number four, don't be afraid to delete. In my opinion, one of the best game design features in Satisfactory is the fact that there is no penalty for deleting. As in, when you delete things, you get 100% of the resource cost back, which means we have so much room for creativity without any regret. Don't be afraid to try out crazy ideas. In the worst case scenario, you delete it and try again. Other than that, another quite common strategy for building a mega base is building a starter base, which you will generally be a temporary base that allows you to unlock all the technology tiers and start building a storage supply of resources. Then, when you've planned out your mega base and got it started, you can go back and delete your starter base and either use all that resource for your main base or simply crush it all up for tickets. And that's what we did. And finally, tip number five, be prepared to troubleshoot. Now, when building massive production lines and huge factories, such as our copper ingot project, which contains 320 refineries, you can't always guarantee that you're going to get everything 100% right first try. Even if you have all the maths correct, the sheer volume of belts, pipes and power lines etc that need to be hooked up, it leaves a lot of room for human error. So be prepared to troubleshoot your setups. To be completely honest, every single project I've ever worked on has had at least one problem. Whether it's a pipe not connected, or a pump not powered up, or something more difficult to find like a Mark IV conveyor lift when it should have been a Mark V. Anyway, we're all human, and we aren't perfect, so be prepared to troubleshoot. Alright, well, there it is. That's my personal five tips for massive factories. I uh, hope everyone enjoyed the video, and... I'll catch you later.